Hi, and welcome to just a quick video on um, an example problem relating to bomb calorimetry. Um, the problem that we're going to look at in this video is like number three from the homework assignment that we did um, yesterday. So it's similar, um, a little bit different, but I wanted to make it a little similar. That way you can refer to the homework question as we go through this. So in this problem, it says a bomb calorimeter with a calorimeter constant of 1.23 kilojoules per degree Celsius contains 0.6 kilograms of water. How much heat is released when 6 grams of sucrose is burned? It says the temperature of the calorimeter and its contents increase from 23 to 50 degrees Celsius. So what I want to do is first, let's just label what we have. So we have the calorimeter constant. Calorimeter constant is capital C cal, 1.23 kilojoules per degree Celsius. We have the mass of water, which is 0.6 kilograms. And then it says how much heat is released when six grams of sucrose. So we have mass of sucrose. Don't know if we need that or not, but you can label it. And then the temperature and its contents increase from 23 to 50 degrees Celsius. So our delta T is final minus initial, which is going to be 27 degrees Celsius. So remember, if we want to find delta T, it is T final minus T initial. It's always final minus initial. So the first thing to do with this problem so we've labeled our variables. Now what we need to do is figure out what is happening in this calorimeter. What is reacting? So we have sucrose burning. That's our focus in this. So I'm going to say Q reaction. Okay, Q reaction represents the sucrose. Um, if instead of reaction you want to write Q combustion, you can. Maybe you want to write Q of sucrose, right? Either one of those is fine. I'm just going to use Q reaction because that's our focus. So then also we need to think we have the sucrose transferring energy. What else do we have transferring energy in this? Well, if we have the calorimeter constant here, Okay, that means that our calorimeter is going to also be transferring heat. So we're also going to have Q cal for the calorimeter. And then think about, is there anything else that's in the calorimeter that could be transferring heat? Well, it says that we also have 0.6 kilograms of water in the calorimeter. So we're also going to have water transferring energy. Now, these are our three systems, right? These are the three ways that we can transfer heat in this reaction. The first law of thermodynamics says that all of the heats have to equal zero, right? First law of thermodynamics says energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So now what I want to do is I want to look at how to solve for each of these three heat values. So the problem wants us to figure out how much heat is released when sucrose is burned. So we are actually going to be solving for Q reaction right here, which means I'm just going to leave it as Q reaction. I'm just going to leave it as Q. That's the variable I'm solving for. Um, the heat from the calorimeter, and look at your notes or look at your homework, how do we solve for heat of the calorimeter? Well, we use capital C cal times delta T, right? The heat from the calorimeter is equal to the calorimeter constant times the change in temperature. And then the heat from the water, right? This is just the heat transferred from the water. We're going to use MC delta T equal to zero, right? Everything equals to zero because any heat that's released or absorbed is just being transferred from system to surroundings. So again, we're solving for Q reaction, so I'm going to leave it as Q. Plus, now I'm just going to start solving, or I'm going to start plugging in variables for each 
each of the, the unknowns. So C cal is my calorimeter constant, 1.23 kilojoules per degree Celsius. I'm going to include units so that way we can look at canceling. Delta T. Um, delta T is actually going to be the same for both of these because that is the temperature change of the calorimeter and its contents, which means everything inside the calorimeter changes by that much. So our delta T is going to be 27 degrees Celsius. Plus, now we're looking at MC delta T, we're looking at heat of water. So we need the mass with the specific heat and the delta T. So we, we haven't written C down over here. Well, the specific heat of water is something that you need to know. 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So what's my mass unit in my specific heat? My mass unit in specific heat is grams, which means my mass of water here needs to be converted to grams. So I'm going to multiply by 1,000. So we get 600 grams of water. C is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius times delta T, which is 27 degrees Celsius. All right, this whole thing still equals zero. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to cancel units. So we have Q reaction plus 1.23 kilojoules over degree Celsius times degree Celsius. Okay, so right now for Q cal, we're at kilojoules. And then plus 600 grams, so my grams cancel, my degree Celsius cancel. Now with Q of water, I'm left with joules. So we have Q reaction plus 33.21 kilojoules plus 67,780.8 joules equals zero. So what I did is I pulled Q reaction down, that's what I'm solving for, and then I multiplied C cal times delta T to get 33. Notice my units in kilojoules. I just canceled out units. And then I did MC delta T. I got 67,780, but that is in joules. What do you notice about my units of Q cal and Q water? Okay, one is in kilojoules, one is in joules. These units need to be the same in order to combine like terms. So it's probably going to be easier to work with kilojoules. So let's convert this to kilojoules. To When we want to go from joules, 67,780.8 joules, there is a thousand joules in one kilojoule. So 67.78, we'll say one kilojoules. So now going back, Q reaction plus 67.781 kilojoules plus 33.21 kilojoules all equals zero. So we can combine like terms. Q reaction plus 100.99 kilojoules equals zero. And then if I want to solve for Q reaction, I just take the opposite sign of this, negative 100.99 kilojoules of heat. And in this, my heat is released. So if you go back and you look at the problem, the reason that we know that we're probably on the right track is because the problem says how much heat is released, which means my sine of Q is negative. So something to think about as you work through these problems is first determine your system um, or systems okay, and the Q involved. Okay, and then keep in mind that all heat is conserved. What that means is 
we use Q1 plus Q2 equals zero, or Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 equals zero. Um, because then that will help you figure out you know, what you're looking for. You'll probably, if you're doing bomb calorimetry, have Q reaction, you'll probably have a Q cal, and you'll probably have Q of water. If the calorimeter didn't have water in it, then we actually could have ignored this value. Right, if it was just heat of combustion in a bomb calorimeter and you only had to worry about Q cal, you do Q reaction plus Q cal equals zero. So hopefully this video helped with going through a bomb calorimetry example. Um, you can definitely look at some of the problems in the book, um, but I think the, the practice with the homework and the thermochemistry practice sheet that you got, um, those two have the best bomb calorimetry practice problems for you.